Hey, thanks, Dan. So in this clip, we're going to be going over two examples on how to graph um, absolute value functions. So the instructions are as follows. I'll find the vertex, shift, and opening of the given absolute value functions and sketch the graph. All right, so before we start um, doing the problems, let's go over some uh, formulas. Basically, one formula that can guide our um, determination of the properties and also uh, guide our construction of the graph. So the general form of the um, equation of uh, an absolute value can be given by y equals a time, uh, times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Okay. All right. So what do these components mean? Well, um, a tells you to open and if it opens up or down. So if a is positive, if a is positive then um, the uh, absolute value function opens up, okay? Which means it's going to be like this, like a V opening upwards. And then if A is negative, then the, the graph is going to, the, um, the graph of the absolute value function is going to open down and it's going to look something like this, like an upside down V, okay? Uh, let's sketch that again, something like this. All right, how about the H and the K? Well, the H and the K are your uh, vertical and horizontal translations. So, um, the, also the vertex, let's write down the vertex, where the vertex is basically given by the opposite of the number next to X, which is H, and the other number outside the absolute value sign that's being added on, which is K. All right, this also tells us the shifts. Um, in this case, um, the shifts are going to be h units to the right and k units upwards. If, it's, if they're both negative, then you go the opposite direction. All right. So let's take a look at uh, the first example. Question number one. What if we have um, the absolute value were to graph the absolute value function given by y equals the absolute value of x plus 1, plus 3, okay? So what's the value of A here? There isn't any number in front of the absolute value quantity, so we can just put in a 1, all right? So we can see that A is 1. So since A is 1, which is positive, a positive number, um, our the, the uh, absolute value function is going to open upwards. Okay? Remember the case of a quadratic? If it's positive, it opens up, it's happy and sad, that's exactly the same situation here. So um, it's going to open open up, and then it's going to look like this. Like a v. If it were negative, it will open downwards. All right, what are the vertex? What's the vertex of this, uh, the graph of, the, of this function right here? Now you take the number next to x, you do the opposite of that, negative 1 for the um, movement horizontally. And then the other number outside that's been added onto the absolute value quantity, you just take it the way it is. You don't do the opposite, all right? So the vertex tells us the shifts. So what are the shifts here? Now, since x is uh, negative, that means we're going to be going in the uh, uh, left direction, okay? The direction of the negative values of x. So we're going to shift one unit. Uh, one unit to the left, one unit to the left, and then on the y is positive three, and then three units up, three units up. So those are basically your shifts for the um, graph of the vertex of the absolute value function given by this equation right here. All right, so let's go ahead and graph it. Now to set up our coordinate system, since we have negative one three, that means our vertex is going to be shifted to the left and up to quadrant number two. All right. So since our graph is in quadrant two, we need to shift our y-axis to the left a little bit, and then shift our x-axis downwards to compensate for for the shifts. Okay. So let's label our axis. This is x, and this is y. So starting from the center, we're going to shift one unit to the left and three units. So this is negative one. And then we're going to shift three units up. One, two, three. That's three. 
So this right here is the vertex of our absolute value function. All right, so since a is 1 is going to be of exactly the same width as the parent absolute value function, so let's put in some points. It's going to go one unit up, one, right, um, one up one to the right, one up one to the right. The slope on the right side of your vertex is positive 1, and then the slope on the left side of your vertex is negative 1. So it just points like that, okay? So those points define the, the graph of the absolute value function. All right, so let's go ahead and graph it through there, and then through there, okay? So that's your, that's your graph. Let's label the vertex. This right here is your vertex, and it's given by negative 1, 3. So there you have it. Okay, let's take a look at uh, another example of question number 2. For question 2, what if we have... Um, the absolute value function given by y equals negative of the absolute value of x minus 2 minus 1. Okay? Alright, so let's start out by um, determining the opening of, of uh, the graph of this um, absolute value function. So for the opening, we want to look at the value of a, okay? In this problem, a is equal to, there's no number here, so we know that the visible number is 1. You can put a 1 there. It's a multiplicative identity. You can multiply by 1 without altering the magnitude of a number. So a is negative 1. All right, since a is negative 1, it is, is a negative number. So what does that tell us about the opening? It tells us that the um, absolute value function is going to open downwards is going to be a uh, upside down v all right okay um next let's look at the uh, vertex so to find the vertex you take the opposite of the number next to the x inside the absolute value bars which is two and then the other number on the outside has been added or subtracted from this term which is negative one so you have to remember that you only take the opposite of the number next to x for the x-coordinate of the vertex. For the y-coordinate of the vertex, you just take the number as it is, as long as it's on the same side as the term with the x-quantity, all right? So there goes your vertex. Now, the vertex also tells us the shifts, makes it very obvious. So let's write down what the shifts are. So since so you have positive two, that means you're gonna move two units, um, two units to the right. And then you have negative one there, you're gonna, that means you're going to move one unit down. All right, so there goes your shifts. All right, let's go ahead and uh, draw the graph of our um, absolute value function. Now, since it's two and negative one, we're going to shift two units to the right and down one. That takes us to quadrant four. Since we're in quadrant four, we're going to move our y-axis to the left a little bit. And then we're going to shift our um, x-axis upwards, all right, to compensate for the shifts um, of the vert on the vertex of our of our absolute value function, all right? Let me move this a little bit here. Okay, now let's label our axis. This is our this is our x-axis right here, and this is our y-axis. All right, start off by graphing the our x. Coordinate is two units to the right, so one, two, so this is two. So that's for the x, and then y is negative one, so you go down one, negative one. So this point basically defined our vertex, okay? Now, how do we draw our absolute value function? Remember the opening is downwards, right? Since the magnitude is, since a is um, one, negative one, that means that we're just going to be going, um, the slope is going to be uh, negative 1 on the right and then positive 1 on the left, okay? So just put your points. So put a point like there. That's on the right side of our vertex and on the left side of our vertex, put a point right there. Okay, that's enough. Okay, so those are the points that define our absolute value function that opens downwards with a equals negative 1, okay? So that goes like that. And then the other one like that. All right, and let's label our vertex. So 
this point right here. That is our vertex. And the coordinate of our vertex is um, 2 comma negative 1. Okay, so there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to my channel so you can get updates to all the cool um, other two clips such as this. Please post a comment to let me know what you think about this presentation. And do give me a thumbs up if you liked it. I uh, really appreciate it. More clips can be found on microserve.com slash algebra2. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day.